My name is Harvey Levy, and I am senior physician in medicine and genetics at Boston Children's Hospital, and I'm professor of pediatrics at the Harvard Medical School. I've uh, been involved in homocystinuria for, for over 50 years. Well, classical homocystinuria is uh, one of the so-called inborn errors of metabolism, metabolic disease. Now, methionine is an amino acid that's present in virtually all of the food we eat. It's present in very large quantity in meat and fish and cheese and milk and, and hot dogs and hamburgers and all sorts of, of food that we're, we're very familiar with. So it's uh, what we call a ubiquitous amino acid. It's present all over the place. So we eat homocystine, and our body converts the methionine to homocysteine. It's a very simple conversion, but it's a very important conversion. And so we end up with homocysteine in our body as a result of the fact that we eat methionine. Now, when we have homocysteinuria or HCU, what happens is that the homocysteine cannot be further changed. It accumulates, it builds up in our body because in order for it to be changed, it has to be converted to another compound, which has a very complicated name called cystothionine. But what is most important is that people with HCU lack the enzyme, which is responsible for changing homocysteine to cystothionine. And, and that enzyme is called cystothionine beta synthase, or, or it's abbreviated CBS. And many of you, I think, have probably heard uh, that term. Uh, and so people with homocysteinuria cannot do that. They cannot convert the homocysteine to cystothionine, and homocysteine then builds up in very large quantities in the body, in the blood, in the liver in many of the tissues of the body. An elevated methionine forms the basis for the diagnosis of homocysteinuria to a great extent. However, homocysteine, when it increases, does cause problems. We call that a toxic amino acid when it is in very large quantities in the body. And these abnormalities include problems of the eye. Eventually, for instance, uh, the eye, the lenses of the eye, the outside part of the in, in the, of the eye itself, will then dislocate, will move out from the center of the eye, and and so consequently, when dislocation of the lens occurs, people with HCU become very very nearsighted. We call that myopia. In addition, things that happen to the bones occur in homocystinuria. Uh, the bones don't form properly, so that people with homocystinuria tend to be rather tall. They tend to have particularly very long arms and long legs, and different problems can occur as a result of that. People with homocystinuria, if they're not properly treated and if the homocysteine is not properly controlled, then they uh, have problems in early on in development. They may not walk at the proper time when they're babies. And they may not talk when they're supposed to when they're babies. And when they go to school, they may have difficulty in school. And as they get older, they may have difficulty um, learning things. And as people get older with homocystinuria, and if the homocysteine is not properly controlled, uh, they may have psychological difficulties. Uh, problems with depression or anxiety or getting along with people or controlling their temper or in the work process. They may have problems in organizing uh, their work, organizing their thoughts. Um, and very unfortunately, if the homocysteine is not properly controlled, uh, they have problems with blood clotting. And so consequently, the blood clots, clotting problem will cause them to have what we call pulmonary embolism. Or they may have a blood clot in a, a large blood vessel that goes up into the brain uh, or in the brain itself. And so consequently, they may have a stroke. Uh, so these are all complications of homocystinuria. 
that occur when the homocysteine level is too high. And consequently, there have been treatments developed over the years, and you're very familiar with perhaps the most important uh, current treatment in homocystinuria, which is a diet, uh, which controls the amount of methionine that comes into the body, and is a matter of fact, in, in the food, and by reducing the amount of methionine that, that comes into the body from food, the level of homocysteine is reduced. The problem is that the diet is very, very difficult.